Right, we have model paper number one from the official SQA specimen question with question paper with answers by Hodder Gibson. So, model paper one, actually the second paper in the book. First question from the non-calculate paper. Four and one third, subtract one and a half. So I'm just going to split that up into four and one third, subtract one, then subtract a half. So four and a third, subtract one is three and a third. Still got to take away that half. So we need to write thirds and halves with a common denominator. So I can double the top and the bottom of the third to turn it into sixths. I can triple the top and the bottom of the half to get it into sixths. So I have three holes and two sixths. Two sixths, subtract three sixths. If I take two sixths off, I'll get three holes. So I've got one more sixth to take off, so that'll be two holes and five sixths. On to the second question. Multiply in our brackets. So we can multiply through here. So 3x times all of the first bracket, all of the second bracket even. Then minus 2 times all of the second bracket. So 3x times 2x squared is 3 2 is a 6. x times x squared, x cubed. 3x times x. Well, x times x is x squared, so 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 5. 3 5 is a 15, so 3x times 5 is 15x. We've got minus 2 times 2x squared. That's minus 4x squared. Minus 2 times x, minus 2x, and minus 2 times 5, minus 10. So we then need to tidy that up. So I have 6x cubed. I have 3x squared minus 4x squared. That's minus 1x squared. 15x subtract 2x, 13x, and just minus 10 on the end. Question number 3. Rearrange to make M the subject of the formula. So what I'm going to do first is multiply both sides by K. Or if you like to think of it as cross-multiplying, bring the K from the bottom on this side of the on the right-hand side of the equal sign up to the top on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So we get just multiplying both sides by K. LK equals root M. Now we want M, not root M, so we need to square both sides here. So I square the left-hand side, I get LK all squared. And on the right-hand side, if I square a square root, that just basically disappears. That's why I'm choosing to square, just so I get M on its own. And then as LK all squared equals M, M will just be LK times LK, which is L squared K squared. On to number four. We have a vector question. So from A to B is vector U. So from B to C and F to E and E to D will also be vector U. A to F is vector V. So B to E and C to D will also be vector V. So first question is, write down AD in terms of U and V. So to get from A to D, I go A to B, B to C, then C to D. So that'd be U plus U plus V, or 2U plus V. Then C to E for part two here. So to get from C to E, I could go C to D and D to E. I could also have went C to B and B to E. So C to D is V. Then D back to E is not U, it would be negative U because we're going in the opposite direction. So it'd be V minus U. Question number five. As you will know, because you should have the, the book here, there was a big circle in this picture as well, so we're using the fact that OP, OS, and SQ are all radii or radiuses of the circle. So the question says, find the angle QSR, QRS, sorry, which I've marked on the diagram there. So it would also be the same as PRS or ORS, basically the, the angle at R. There it is. A couple different ways of doing it. This is the way that I've chosen. First step, I'm going to use the fact that O to P and O to S are both the radii of the circle, which makes triangle O to P to S isosceles. 
So PSO will be 28 degrees. I also know that O to S to R will be a right angle as RS is a tangent of the circle. So it says 90 degrees there. It looks a bit like 40, but it should be 90. So angle PSR, that would be the 90, add the 28, that would be 118. Now I want QRS or PRS. Well, I know at the top left at P there, that's 28 degrees. I know the big angle at S, all of that angle is 118. So the angle at P, add the large angle at S, add the angle at R, that will make 180 degrees. So I'm just looking at the large triangle here, PRS. So we're looking at 180 minus 118 minus 28, and that turns out to be 34 degrees. So again, a quick recap of that. I'm looking at the large triangle. So I've got P to R to S and back up. So I'm just looking at 180 degrees there. So we've got 28, 118 down here. So that last one will be 34. Number six, a wee bit of algebra, it says simplify this. Write this in its simplest form. So at the moment, nothing cancels. We need to be questions like this. We always look to factorise. So the top has a common factor of 3y. 3 goes into 3 and 6. y goes into y squared and y. So 3y times y minus 2 gives 3y squared minus 6y. And on the bottom, it will be a double bracket question. Two numbers multiply together to make negative 6, add together to make plus 1, because we have plus 1y. So that'll be y plus 3y minus 2. So in a question like this, you're almost guaranteed that a term on the top will cancel with a term on the bottom once you have factorised. And indeed it does here, so we can cancel out the y minus 2s, and we just have 3y over y plus 3. On to number 7, 9 to the 3 over 2. Top of the fraction there tells us to cube it. The bottom number tells us which root to take. So we're taking the square root of 9 cubed. Now I could do 9 cubed. 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. Then square root 729, which is 27. It's far too much work though. Square root, the square root 9 first will get 3. Then cube 3. 3 times 3 times 3. 27. Number eight, we are given a diagram on question eight. We have a, an unhappy parabola, as I would call it, crossing at minus one and five. Asked for the line of symmetry or the axes of symmetry. Well, right in the middle of minus one and five, we have two. So the axes of symmetry will go through the x coordinate of two. And it is a vertical line, so we'll just call it x equals two. And part B, it gives us the equation. The equation was 5 plus 4x minus x squared. It's asking for the maximum value. No, the maximum value occurs when x equals 2 because it's sitting on the axis of symmetry. So I just substitute in 2. It'll be 5 plus 4 twos minus 2 squared, which is 9. Now, it doesn't ask me for the maximum turning point, but the question wasn't that clear. So I've written down the maximum turning point is at 2,9. Wouldn't lose any marks if I didn't, didn't actually ask me for it. But I'm, I'm not taking any risks there by writing them down. Question number nine gives us a graph with two straight lines on it, asks us to find the point of intersection, gives us the equation of each line. It says solve it algebraically. It's basically a simultaneous equations question solve that graphically if we've got the axes on the graph or we can solve using algebra so here I'm just going to rearrange uh, equation number one I'm going to bring that 2x across I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides so it becomes y minus 2x equals negative 3 I'm then going to double it the reason why I'm doubling it is to get 2y, and because I've already got 2y up here in equation 2. So by doubling all of equation 3, I'll get 2y subtract 4x equals negative 6. 
Now looking at equation 2, I have x plus 2y, or 2y plus x equals 14. So I've got 2y and 2y. I want rid of the 2y's. Because they're both positive, I'm going to subtract them. If I added them, I'd get 4y. But I want 0y. So 2y take 2y is nothing. So I'm doing all of equation 2, take away all of equation 4. Then x subtract minus 4x is 5x. 14 subtract negative 6 is 20. So 5x is a 20. Divide through by 5, x is 4. To find the value of y, we'll just substitute back into equation 1. So y is 2 4s take away 3, because it was 2x take 3, and x is 4. So y would be 5. Question number 10. We're given a graph. We are told that as of the form y equals a cos bx. Now a is just how much the graph has been stretched by. A is the amplitude. So amplitude is 5. B is how many complete waves we would have in 360 degrees. We have two waves in 180. So we would have four waves in 360. So B would be 4. So A is 5, B is 4. Question number 11. So I've, if you see here, I've crossed out the A and the B. That's what orig we originally had. It says show the value of cos B is 5 ninths. Now the equation I've got, or the equation we have, is cos A equals A squared. No, it doesn't. It's B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. So rather than changing the formula, I'm just going to change the triangle, or the angles of the triangle. So I've renamed I've called, crossed out B, called it A, crossed out A, called it B. So it's the angle that was originally B, but we're calling A now, that we're working out. So substituting our values, 6 squared, add 3 squared, minus 5 squared. Remember, little a is opposite angle A, little b is opposite angle B, little c is opposite angle C, etc. Just do 6 squared, add 3 squared, minus 5 squared. So eventually we come down to 20 over 36. Which cancels down to 5 ninths. So cos A will be 5 over 9, but originally it was called cos B because we renamed it. So just at the bottom, cos B equals 5 over 9, double underlined. Question 12 was the area of a rectangle. Length was 2 root 3 centimetres, breadth was root 6 centimetres. So area is length times breadth, 2 root 3 times root 6. So root 3 times root 6 is the root of 3 times 6, which is root 18. And as it was 2 root 3, that would be 2 root 18. Now, every time we get a third in an exam paper, we can almost always simplify it. So here we're looking for a square number that goes into 18. So root 18 is root 9 root 2. The reason why we pick root 9, we know the square root of 9 is 3. So we've got 2 times 3 times root 2, which is 6 root 2 centimetres squared. And number 13, a algebraic fraction question. When we're adding fractions, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the left-hand fraction there by m plus 1 over m plus 1. So I'm really just times and by 1 there, because anything divided by itself is 1. So I'm not, I'm not changing the fraction as such. I'm just writing an, an equivalent fraction, just like 1 half is 2 quarters, or 3 sixths, or 4 eighths. And the right-hand fraction, I'm going to multiply by m over m. So now we have a common denominator. And on the, for the numerators, we have 3 lots of m plus 1, plus 4 lots of m. Now just multiply out the brackets on the top. Nothing's happened to the denominator. Click together terms. 7m plus 3 over m, m plus 1. Okay, and that is paper 1 finished. I think. No, it's not. One more question. Uh, so we're given an equation. It was 2x squared at 8x plus 5 equals 0. It says show the roots are real and irrational. So the real bit's easy to do. b squared minus 4ac. Substitute in the values of a, b, and c. It comes to be 24. So b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. So the roots are going to be real. Right, 
because this 24 is not a perfect square, that means the roots are going to be irrational as well. So I'll make the statement first. So b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0 and not a perfect square. Hence, roots are real and irrational. Well, why are they irrational? So going back to our quadratic formula, our minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Our b squared minus 4ac but here, we've got the square root of 24. So when we're getting the prop, if we actually worked out the roots, we'd have the square root of 24. The square root of 24 is an irrational number because it's not, an, it's not going to be a nice number like the square root of 25 is 5 or the square root of 16 is 4. So it's irrational. There's always going to be a third attached to this, a square root attached to it. So that makes it irrational. So that's why if we don't have a perfect square, the roots are going to be irrational. And that is the end of paper one.